Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at how to um, use PowerPoint for drag and drop activities. Maybe some of you have these already created in Google Slides or have downloaded or bought them from Google Slides. You can download that Google Slide and you can open it in PowerPoint and it would look something like this. Or if you're looking to design your own drag and drop activities or other manipulative um, type activities, this is how you can do it. So, um, for more on creating worksheets, you're going to see how almost I create a worksheet in this. Check out my other video. You can see it down in the uh, description on creating worksheets using PowerPoint. It may be helpful um, for you. I'm going to more specifically go over um, some drag and drop specific capabilities here. So for instance, I have an activity right here that take, has students look at hardware and software and sort them or you know drag and drop them into specific areas. I've heard from other teachers that do things like um, a language teacher said that they have different objects and there's a sentence and students have to arrange the objects as the sentence kind of describes. So that's a really cool activity. So any type of manipulative thing you wanna create, here's how you can do it in PowerPoint and assign it in Microsoft Teams for your students to complete. So um, I have hardware and software here, and if I zoom out a bit, you'll notice I have these images. So students would be given this sheet, and then they can go and they can just kind of sort these into their appropriate categories, and they could submit it, and then I could check to see and make sure they've sorted it um, correctly. Um, so you could use this for a number of things. Could be vocabulary also, etc. Um, so how to set this up is um, you simply just create a PowerPoint presentation. Um, you design the slide the way you want, and then you add the images you want. So first, let's talk about just adding the images. Now, what I did is I had them outside the, the PowerPoint area. Sometimes this can be confusing um, for students when they're not on the slide. So another suggestion that I can make is if you go over to um, the design section, of your PowerPoint, you could you could make this so that um, the slide is actually larger. So if the size of it doesn't fit your you know images or your drag and drop things, um, you can go over and you can you can make this custom size. So for instance, for mine, really the height needs to be a little bit bigger. It'd be nice if this was all the same size. So I'm going to say 13 inches for the height also. Okay, and uh, if we zoom out a little bit here. We can do that and now now maybe i can include these images um, towards the bottom but now you may be saying um you know i can make these a little bit smaller and do that but you may notice that my um columns because i hit maximize also expanded and you'll notice that on the slide um i can't edit this so this is really important for when you're creating one of these activities. You don't want students to really edit the background, essentially, that you want to create. So again, check out my um, video on creating worksheets in PowerPoint. It will give you more hints on this. But what you can do to, to mess around with this is go over to click on View, and you're going to change the Slide Master. And so where I've de uh, designed this table is in the Slide Master. And so um, the students won't be able to mess around with the slide master or you know, won't easily mess around with it when they're working on this. So what I can do is notice I've created this table in here and anything you add to the slide master, images, text boxes, et cetera, um, won't be able to be edited on the normal slide. So I can go over here and I can say, all right, I'm gonna make this area smaller now. And um, you know, I only want half the size and students are gonna drag the images over here. And then this is the area that I'm gonna include the images. So I can just hit close slide master now, notice it's edited. And down here, I'm just gonna you know, scatter the images for students to sort. So that's one thing you can do. Um, another helpful hint uh, for adding images for something like this is of course you can go and you can Google image or, or Bing search. Um, pictures online and copy and paste them into your PowerPoint. I'm sure most of you know how to do that. But another useful thing I'd like to show off is um, if you go to insert and you go over to pictures, there is an online pictures capability that lets you use Bing image search right inside of PowerPoint. And so we can go over and I can say something like uh, power, computer power supply is another one, computer power supply or whatever you're looking for. And it lets you select Creative Commons only, or if you don't care about that, you can search for any image. 
the thing that I like most is this filters capability. And when I select filters, I can select something like transparent. So it's only images with a transparent background. So again, this little filter lets you pick, you know, obviously if you don't want little tiny images, you want nice high resolution ones, um, all different animated GIFs you're looking for. I'm gonna select transparent images. And now it only shows me transparent image ones. All right, I like this one here. I can click insert. And it's going to add that picture, and now I can arrange it the way I want, set these up, and the students will now see it. So the regular slide that your students are going to work on, you're going to add the manipulative things, the images that they're going to move around. The things you don't want them to be able to edit, the non-manipulative things, you're going to use the Slide Master for. So you go to View, Slide Master, and you can design the slide to look as however you want it to look. The slide master, once you create it, will show up when you go to create new slide, click this drop down. The ones you design will show up there. All right, so let's save this. Let's add this assignment in Teams so you can see that, and then I'll open it in a student account so you can see what it looks like from the student's perspective. So I saved it ensured it was saved. I'm going to go over to Microsoft Teams. In order for this to work and a student to be able to edit it, you're going to see each student's response. Each student's going to get their own copy of it. You have to use the assignments feature. And so when you go over to assignments, you're going to click create. You're going to create a new assignment. You can add a title wherever you want. So I'm going to call this drag and drop activity. This is, of course, the student-facing title, so you want to name it something specific for what you're doing. I'm just doing this as an example for you. Some instructions. Open PowerPoint below and complete the drag-and-drop activity. Whatever you want to say for instructions. Of course, you can assign points, add a rubric, due dates, all the other stuff that's part of assignments. But the important thing for us is we're going to add a resource. Resources files we can give to this assignment that the students can either just view or edit. If you have it on your OneDrive, you can, of course, go there. I'm going to upload this from my device. Here's the file that I saved. I had saved it in my downloads folder. You navigate to wherever you saved the file. It's going to upload. And the important step here is that when this when the file is added, you need to ensure that students can edit the file. So you don't want them to have view-only access. You want each student to get their own copy to edit. So it, how to do that is notice if, when you first upload a file, so students can't edit the file. It's just a resource. If you go all the way to the right, you have these three dots, and you want to select students edit their own copy. Each student will get their own copy and be able to edit this and submit it for you. So I'm going to click on Assign now. It's an Assign to the students. Um, I'll get a notification in a minute. It's assigned. Let's pull up my example student account here. There it is. It's assigned. I have my example student account now. Let me just clear out this little notification. Drag and drop, Oh, which I misspelled. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, let's go to Assignments. Click on the activity. Notice how we got the instructions. Here's the student's work. They click on it. The activity comes up. They can edit this. Notice they can't edit this, these words because we put it in the slide master like I described, but they can move these images around. So now they're going to go through. They're going to complete the activity. When they're done, they simply click close. They turn in the assignment. They get the nice, cool Microsoft Teams animations. And then let's see what the teacher sees. So I'm going to go over. I'm going to click on drag and strop activity. And I now notice one of my, my student has turned in the assignment. The status is turned in. And I can view their submission. So just like that, you can see every student's submission. You can navigate between your students. You can see how they did. Notice it's, it's not updating, so that's that's not good. Maybe I moved too fast and the students didn't save. Let's check this out. Oh, 
works unlocking now. So be careful because that happens to my students once in a while. They should ensure that their work saves. My work did not save because I was probably because I was moving really fast. All right, I've gone through, I've re-edited it. Um, I ensured it saved this time from my student view. Um, this has happened to my students before, so it's funny it hasn't happened to me before, but my students have often complained that it, it doesn't save, didn't save their work. Um, probably when they, they moved quickly, similar to me. It is saved now. I go over and let's give this a refresh. My student has hopefully turned it in again and I should be able to review their work. And now I can, perfect. So now um, after the student made sure it's saved, it's here uh, and we can, we can see their work and you can go and you can review each one and you can assign them points. I didn't put any points for this assignment, so it was there. So that's it. Thank you for watching and uh, let me know if you have any other ideas or if you have any questions, uh, put a comment down below and uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button so you can check out more videos from me in the future.